City area. We're more specifically in New New Jersey, North Jersey. My name is Abel Mireles. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a very special show um, for you. We uh, have a very special guest that uh, we excited to talk to and ask him some questions. And and as you know, uh, this is the space that we've been building to actually uh, uh, bring in this uh, amazing musicians that live in this area and all over the world now with the internet and and all the many things that uh this technologies can help us do um as if you haven't uh, yet follow us on all the social media platforms make sure you do so by going to instagram and going to add the underscore jazz underscore underscore exchange and um click that follow button we do post uh, a, a bunch of our updates on instagram um, a lot of the different things that we do are there as well as on Facebook. Facebook is also one of our main platforms where we let you know what we're doing. So make sure to go to the Facebook and follow the page, like the page too as well. Uh, YouTube is one of our main platforms where we actually uh, posting a lot of our video productions or, you know, different pro project productions such as virtual jazz sessions and different things that we're doing. So make sure to go to YouTube. Um, as we're actually live streaming live right now. So you can either watch uh, Facebook and YouTube for our Wednesday uh, exchange live session. So that that's that for you. But um, make sure to go to also to Twitter and our website. Um, we're going to do the usual introduction and uh, explain some of the programs. Like our educational program is an amazing program that we're trying to build more and more. Uh, it's a program we started about two years ago. And uh, has uh, had the opportunity to to uh, help some uh, students from the from the borderland of El Paso and and Juarez, Mexico. So the the students are students that are eager to learn about jazz, and we've connected with uh, organizations like Jazz House Kids, and they uh, they come for the summer workshop and uh, spend a couple of weeks with you know learning from some of the top musicians of the of the music. They get to to meet Christian McBride and play at Dizzy's Club and all that. But all of that can't happen without the help of and scholarships of uh, from uh, Jazz House Kids and also partners like uh, uh, SMART uh, that they sponsor the kids to, to cover all the expenses to come out here. So if you want to be part of this, you want to support some of the kids, get in touch with us. And we, do, we are running the program uh, this year as well. We're doing it virtually, so make sure you stay in touch. Now we also have a program that uh, that is our, our relief um, uh, GoFundMe campaign is the exchange relief exchange the Jazz Exchange Relief Fund. Pardon me. Um, you can go to uh, GoFundMe and find us like that by typing the Jazz Exchange Relief Fund, and you'll hear more about what we're doing with this particular program of the Jazz Exchange. This relief fund is is about uh, providing help uh, to musicians that fill out of work by either uh, you know, uh, giving them commissions or different things of performances remotely as we can do it right now. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a couple of things coming up that we want to do with this. 
Uh, so if you want to join the efforts, uh, just make sure to go to GoFundMe and uh, put your contribution there. So, um, yeah, so that takes us to February 2021. Crazy, crazy, crazy time in the world. But uh, nonetheless, we have so much stuff to actually celebrate and uh, celebrate that we're here in this world and that we can actually do stuff. And especially this month that we have our celebration of Black History Month. Um, every year, Black History Month stands as a time for us to not only reflect on our collective history and remember those who laid everything on the line for our freedoms, but to reignite our dedication to dismantling systematic barriers that prevent our nation from truly having justice for all. This month-long celebration with the Jazz Exchange Live Sessions will spotlight different artists by amplifying black voices and empowering black artists as well as some um some of the businesses that we're featuring every week for this month that are black owned businesses so i'm going to tell you more about that as we go and uh with that in mind i'd like to introduce to today's uh business that we're featuring uh as, a, as an initiative that we're doing to support uh, black owned businesses we, we introduce you to Crafty Cloth Inc., which is actually a really interesting um, company that is uh, has been funded by founded by uh, Robert Stringer, who is also a musician. This is man, this is super amazing that we're able to connect with with Robert because he represents also um, what uh, a lot of musicians have actually to do. We all have to. I'm a musician myself, and with the pandemic and and you know the all the losses of work and all that he robert actually uh um you know after being such an active musician in the, in, in the new york city area and falling falling out of work he he uh he also thought about different possibilities of uh you know sources of revenue and he invested on crafted cloth bio and he created this so robert stringer born and raised in savannah georgia graduated from michigan state university with a bachelor's in jazz studies and a master's from new england conservatory jeez man after moving to new york and making his dreams come true to perform and tour the world with some of the greatest musicians of all time the pandemic stopped him um it stopped his main class uh, cash flow as a performing musician, Robert used a creative nature, so his creative nature to in innovate and invest in a new company outside of music that could take care of his family. So, uh, man, this is a wonderful story, and uh, and um, we're so happy that musicians are are doing things like this. Uh, Crafty Cloth Inc., which is this company, sells innovative and patented line of, of washcloth and uh, are created to take care of your face, body, and rear end special cleaning needs separately uh, to avoid transmitting harmful germs to vulnerable areas of the body when bathing. Uh, our sets of, uh, their sets of washcloths provide a better, healthier, and more sanitary way to bathe than ever before. Man, it's amazing how musicians we've come up with this, uh, you know, this different ideas of how to actually get involved in the business side of things outside of music. So we're featuring him um, this time around and we actually have um, a giveaway for the people that stayed at the end of this uh, this uh, uh, exchange live session. So make sure you stay around because you want to connect with uh, with Robert and Crafty Cloth and support local own black owned businesses so make sure to stick around and and uh be ready for that so without further ado i'm very 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 honored to actually uh, have this wonderful gentleman that decided to make a little bit of time of his uh, of his uh, uh busy schedule uh he's uh, he's a guy that i really admire as a saxophone player myself he's his tone is amazing he's an educator he's a recording artist he's a composer He's an entrepreneur. I mean, it, it, he's an, an inspiration for for the musicians community, and we're so happy to bring him on. How are you doing, Mr. Mar Gross? I'm <laughs> doing well, thank you. Hey, and hey. as you can see, I'm I'm over here fooling with this light. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, man, we're I'll all. Just, just, 
We, I know. It's crazy, man. Uh, we're all like, man. I, I, I'm so glad I put on a jacket. That way, so when I stand up, folks don't think I have on pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you may see that from time to time. Man, we, but to your question, I'm doing well. Oh, and, great. and thank you for having me here, uh, Abel. I really appreciate it. Hey, man. Thanks for making the time. And, 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 and I feel you. We all learned, uh, I think we've learned the uh, techniques of how to uh, be comfortable and work from home, you know, like. Wear a long shirt, so if you have to stand up, you know, you know, show <laughs> yeah, your PJs yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or exactly, anything. And, exactly, man, exactly. Man, I'm so glad that that you that you're doing good, man. Uh, I've had a chance to uh, met you a couple times in person and and hear you, and uh, and it's it, it's amazing to have you because of uh, all the stuff that you have done and all the stuff that you do for the musicians community the community you're a wonderful teacher you teach in this area you you have a, you know you've been mentor for a lot of musicians and now are doing the thing as well and you keep doing your you know and we know you have some projects coming up that we also want to talk about and all that man um can you tell us about um about yourself uh you know and kind of a in a nutshell like uh, you're growing up as a musician and really diving into the saxophone and and you know I, I moving out here to to jersey sure well i grew up in in baltimore mm. uh baltimore maryland and when i was young talking about my my middle school and high school years uh there were some you know and i'm sure every town has a similar story in that there's these you know you have those seasoned uh veterans who are just kind of just home you know, they, they, they stay local in the sense of staying in the city, but they're kind of worldly known. And for me, those persons were, uh, there was a tenor saxophonist by the name of Mickey Fields, mm, Mickey. Um, who was just extraordinary. He was the kind of guy where if, if a person like, and, and in fact, he knew, you know, Jimmy Heath, he knew mm. Sonny Stitt. Um, so when those persons would come through town, they would often go to where he would play just to sit in with them and, and kind of, you know, have a jam session, that kind of thing. And then, of course, most notably to the world, um, Gary Bartz. Ooh, yeah. So uh, when I was in high school, Gary Bartz had a jazz club in Baltimore. We used to run this club called the Closet Inn. The Closet Inn. And he, we used to go there, like he would allow myself and my brother, um, I have a brother. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll get into my family's whole <laughs> musical backdrop, which is like... You think the Jacksons were impressive? Wait, Ooh. just heard them for a second. <laughs> so, just wait a minute. My, my brother, closest in age to me, he's a trumpet player and uh, a singer, Vincent Gross. Mm -hmm. So we would go to the club where Gary Bartz would play, um, and they would allow us to come in, you know, mostly on the weekends, and he'd just sit us in the back because we were kind of underage. And on any given weekend, you know, there may be Woody Shaw that would come through, mm -hmm or Joe Henderson, or Cedar Walton, or Freddie Hubbard. So all of these guys would come through Baltimore at this club. And I recall once I was talking to, again, one of the old seasoned veterans. I was like, man, Gary Bartz is hip. He know all the cats. Mm -hmm. And the guy looked at me, he was like, because he wanted to catch you, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, go home and do your homework. Right. And I was like, my bad. So of course I went home, Googled, well, not Googled, nice. you know, I looked up Gary Bartz or whatever. What the was. library and <laughs> yeah, whatever that was at the time. And of course, the first thing is pops up, you know, Gary Bartz and Miles Davis, Woo. Gary Bartz, you know, and I was like, my bad. Bad, bad. I mean, I knew he was a player, but I didn't really know the extent of, of what his contributions were. So that was kind of my, my breeding grounds in terms of um, the exposure um, from from you know again the iconic cats who we all grew to love and listen to on records and things like that, and just quickly again in terms of my family, so I was the youngest of seven, and each each of my my siblings, including my parents, did something musical. Mm. Um, uh, my, I mentioned my brother played trumpet. I have a, a sister; she was the the church organist at the time. Um, another, my oldest brother was a guitar player. He, he went to, um, Morgan state university at the time. Um, and, and again, this is during a time where I didn't think that there was such a thing as majoring in music mm -hmm. and having a career or even aspiring to have a career. Um, he went to Morgan, my other brother, um, great, great speaker and, and singer, 
Um, another two of my other two sisters are great singers. So we always had music in the house. And again, by the time I got to high school, there was newly formed a performing arts high school in Baltimore, the Baltimore School for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And um, that really was the, the pivotal change in terms of what I, I, I was like, wow, this is like, this is real, you know, to the sense of at the time, because I was always athletically involved in a lot of sports. I always played football, baseball, basketball, tennis, swim, whatever wow. the, the season was, I was involved with the sport. Nice. But when the School for the Arts came around, it really was a, a, a choice I had to make of, am I going to try to continue sports or am I just going to go into the, the music full time? Because it was it was a lot more involved in terms of what I had to do and practice and things like that. And, you know, the school is, you know, went on to produce, uh, you know, a lot of my good friends um, and a lot of successful people in the music industry now. Um, most notably, you know, the school talks about um, uh, Tupac Shakur went there, mm -hmm. Jada Pinkett went there, um, Tim Green went there, Antonio Hart went there, Antonio, uh, wow. Warren Wolf went there, my nephew Lee Pearson went there. I mean, it's, you know, the list goes on and on. That's just in the music department. And each each department has a list of alums that they could boast about like that. So that was a really, really good grooming um, place where I realized you could be around young people who were interested in what you were interested in and you could you could just go all in. Um, yeah. It was the first time I was around um, people outside of my ethnic group, really. Mm. That was my first exposure mm. to and, and by ethnicity I, that that covers the, 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 the whole spectrum, the whole you spectrum. know, not only just with race, but, you know, gender identifying mm. um, economic and social economic backgrounds. True. Um, you know, religious backgrounds. It was it just it. None of that. Once we walked into that building, seven twelve Cathedral Street. That's wow, how I still remember that address. <laughs> none of that seemed to matter anymore because we were all there, wanting to learn the art. That's and awesome. um, that that really really shaped and and changed who I am now uh, as a musician. Man, yeah. that's a uh, that's a uh, that's really you know really nice that you sharing that. Uh, and so this. Going to go to this art school would really change your 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 way to make that decision. Say, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do oh, this, absolutely. right? And did absolutely. you, by any chance, your brother went to the same school, man? Because uh, well, you know, we actually yeah. listened to the track as people were joining in. We were listening to this really cool track that he's actually uh -huh. on. And I was yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. Mark, is that you? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. you're like, no, that's my brother. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting about my brother Vincent? is he really turned me on to jazz. He mm. went to what was kind of like the rival schools, uh, Douglas High School at the time, mm. uh, where, again, it was just fantastic musicians at that school. But again, because my school was a newly formed school, he would have been probably a junior mm. at the time. So he decided to stay in the school where he was. But he did go to Peabody, which was right nice. around the, the corner from, from where my high school was. So again, in high school, I was studying classical saxophone. I thought I was going to be a concert saxophonist. Really? So I was studying wow. all the repertoire. Yeah, the Eber, the, the Glazenov, the Creston. Creston and I still love that music. And every, from time to time, I, you know, I'll pull out a book and, or a piece and I'll play it a bit. But that's what I wanted to do. I was still in the jazz combo, but I was really like going to competitions playing all this 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 classical repertoire and my brother would often come in my room when I'd be practicing you know he's man you better check out some Charlie Parker you better you better put some cannonball on this stuff, you know? the jazz so, bug in there That's... yeah he put he put the seed <laughs> on me man man and, uh, so I got the best of both you know man that's that's awesome because uh you know having both worlds is is such an I mean of the saxophone the classical saxophone and then the jazz I mean I I guess you know that's I, I'm I'm sure that's why your 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 sound is like huge, man. You got you got this. It, it's so interesting to hear guys like that. That you, I mean, I'm not saying that there's ro nothing wrong. Um, there's any sure, something sure. wrong with if you just do jazz or if you just do one yeah. or the other. But but uh, being able to cross over that's that's amazing. Who who would you say do you you mentioned uh, 
uh, Gary Bartz, uh, you know, is a, it, it's, it's somebody that inspired you. Did you by any chance study with him? Did you get a chance to study saxophone with him? or I never studied with him, but over the years and even to this day, we're, we're really good friends. Mm -hmm. He's just always been a giver of, of information. That's so cool. Um, but persons that I, I, I studied with, I remember the first time I took a lesson was, again, by a local guy, world-renowned, but he grew up in Baltimore, Gary Thomas. Um, the Thomas. great tenor saxophonist, um, who again, you know, played with Miles and and and, and Tony Williams and and so many others. Um, I took a lesson with Gary Thomas, and I remember at the time, what he was showing me was just like it was too much for me it, at the time. It was just, I mean, he was just a phenomenal, phenomenal tenor player. Um, but I would just get with a lot again with a lot of those older guys in Baltimore. Um, my oldest brother, uh, Norwood Gross, we call him Junior. He's named after my dad. He would take us to uh, uh, Mr. Rob. We called him Mr. Rob. He was a guitar player, one of the older guys in Baltimore. And he would have uh, jam sessions at his house in his basement. And he would just have like myself and a lot of the young guys come and sit around with him and some of the older guys and just play standards. So at the time, I didn't know um, a lot of the names of the songs, but he would teach us a lot of, um, you know, a lot of jazz standards. Mm. Um, and we would do that quite often. So it would be kind of that kind of an experience in terms of studying. If I had to say, if I studied with somebody, that would be the, the, the kind of, in, in terms of jazz anyway, that would be what that is. But again, in the School for the Arts, um, I did have a saxophone teacher, uh, Dr. Chris Ford, mm who is now the director of the school. But, um, you know, again, he was he was a classical, classically trained um, uh, saxophonist. Mm. Uh, in fact, his teacher uh, was Jean-Marie Londex. Mm. So for the classical saxophonist, you know, that's that's one step under the guru of Marcel Mule, you know, wow, so that's yeah, amazing. I was I was getting it straight straight from the source mm. in terms of the classical. And then later, I would get it straight from the jazz source, you know, with Jimmy Heath and James Moody and so many others. Mm. You know, man, yeah. it's is. I mean, I I remember touching a little bit on the, you know, because I, I I actually had to study some classical too as well. And the whole thing uh -huh. of like the fingerings for some of this pieces, yeah. like Ebert Concerto, and things yeah. like you know, like man, if I don't know this finger, like I remember just being like yeah. my teacher I was like, hey. You have to learn this finger. So I was like, man, but I could do it like this. And it's like, but yeah, you're not yeah. going to be able to do that at, at tempo right. that, you exactly. know, you don't do this finger. And I was like, oh, shoot, that's true. And and then right. just see and then, you know, hear you that you have both worlds. That's that's amazing, man. As you were mentioning that, you know, uh, you know sometimes uh, uh, musicians uh, tend to be very we tend to be very humble and they've done so many, especially like people like like the people that you mentioned, you know, like yourself as well. You know that you've done so much stuff, uh, uh, you know, and, and people like, you know, like Gary Bars that, are, you know, he was with Miles and stuff. I Sometimes I I wonder, like, what what is it that uh, that we should maybe tell younger generations or, you know, do it myself to, to do to be able to uh, be aware of this amazing things that these musicians are doing especially since we have them around still you know yeah what would you yeah. say that it's like just kind of really reach out and get in touch with these people and you know like yeah well it's interesting you say that because i mean obviously now we're in this pandemic and just being able to even socialize with your friends is is a difficult True. task, right? Let alone your 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 heroes and and icons. But I will say though, lessons learned to me was that, um, you know, I, I've found that a lot of these people are very approachable and very wanting and giving of the information in their own ways. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I remember, and I, I don't mention these names to 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 put, you know, right uh, medals on my lapel, but mm -hmm. it's just it was just fortunate for my experience. Mm -hmm. I was at the North Sea Jazz Festival, and you know you know how those festivals are when all the musicians stay at the same hotel, and you yeah. know you got you get to see and pass each other in in passing. So I'm down in the lobby for breakfast, and I notice, and this is probably an early early 90s, I noticed in a table sitting by himself is James Moody. 
And I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's James Moody. Oh my God. He's just sitting by himself. And you know, I'm sitting by myself. Yeah. So I was like, Mark, get up and go over there. And if nothing but just to say hello to this man. James so Moody. I went over there, I introduced myself, and he was like, come on, sit down, sit down. And for the next 30, 40 minutes, we, it was just the two of us had a wonderful conversation. Of course, this was years before I really got to know him and really befriend him. Mm. Um, so a part of that to me says that if, if for the younger musicians, if they have a desire um, to really fully understand and become as complete as they can, they ought to themselves, one, like that young Mark Gross in Baltimore, who was Gary Boss, man, he must be one of the cats. And then one of the old cats, go home, do your homework. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a bit of investment, investing that they have to do. You have to, you have to do some research and some studying on your own. So that when, you know, for some of your students as well, I'm sure, you know, when they see a Christian McBride or they get to do a master class with him understand the wealth of information that he has from firsthand experience, mm -hmm. you know, and that list is like, could cover <laughs> decades of the history of the music. Right. And I say the music because it's not limited just to jazz. I mean, Christian right. has been around, you know, from James Brown on <clears throat> and, and others. Across, right? So, so, so there's a bit of an, an investment that I think the younger musicians have to commit themselves to, and 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 be bold and 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 in that you know have conversations with with these musicians. Yeah. Um. Listen to their records, their recordings. You know, with the, you know, I'm not um trying to take money out of our pockets in terms of buying records, but you know, you can, you stream music, you can go to YouTube. Right. Um, so there's a lot of resources out there to, to have, you know, to understand what the music is and who these pe people are, particularly the musicians that are still among us, you know, Kenny Garrett. Kenny Garrett. Um, I mean, just, it's just so many, so many, you know, and, dynamic musicians. Right. And I mean, like you said, like we're, well, they still, we still have the benefit of having them around. Uh, yep. Man, I, I, I like to ask you because you, I mean, we, we can dive it into your performance uh, uh, career, but then uh, also I like to ask you some things about your educational experiences and all that. But before that, can we, can we list, can we take that listen and uh, listen to uh, the song that, uh, that was playing at the beginning it's called um while i was sitting in my room that it's yep. actually uh your song your your brother uh on vocals can we just check it out and then you know we're gonna jump and we're gonna dive into more questions man i'm i'm so you know i'm like man, yeah, man. I, I got i got have some list of questions <laughs> but then i'm like oh maybe i should ask this other one yeah 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 absolutely yeah so, uh, absolutely so let's check it out can you tell us about this song man because it's a wonderful tune and then it, you know let us know where what album is it on and all that please yep yep this is from my last recording it's uh plus strings uh it's the core quintet uh, myself, Freddie Hendricks, uh, Benito Gonzalez, mm. Desron Douglas, Corey Rawls, mm. and a fantastic string uh, um, quartet, uh, Kiara Fazi, Jennifer Choi, uh, Celia Hatton on viola, and Jennifer Vincent, who's a great bassist, but she played cello wow. on this record. And of course, my brother, Vincent Grow. So the lyrics really tells it all. It's, it's such a joy to start a brand new day. While yesterday is not so far away, decisions, choices, right or wrong, they're on their way. Mm. So the song kind of speaks about things that are going on. Um, you could take what's going on right now. Yeah. And there are things that are within our, things are going to happen if we're, we're blessed enough to wake up the next day. The day will go on. Right. So we can do we can only control and do what's within our grasp mm. to control or try to influence. So with that in mind, I thought I wanted to write a song that reflected on that and that kind of put the, the idea of with that in mind, I'm just going to do the best that I can do. And that's all I can do Absolutely. in hopes that that will help to make the difference. So this song speaks to that. Man, that's beautiful. You wrote all the, the music and the lyrics, everything. I wrote the music. My brother did the lyrics. My brother okay. and another friend of mine, Gosha, she's a great singer uh, from the Netherlands. 
They wrote the lyrics, nice. but I wrote the, the the melody and the the arrangement and all that other stuff. Awesome! So let's check it out. This is uh, while I was sitting in my room by Mark Rose. It's such a joy to start a brand new day. Why yesterday's not too far away? This is your choice. It's right or wrong. They're on the way. <laughs> there's time to laugh and then there's time to cry. And every morning is a chance to try. Not to be perfect, just to be. It seems enough. Living by choice, not by
man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> when, did, when did you write that, man? That one, I think I was in a really creative space uh, probably in 2017, I think, because we recorded it either in, I think we recorded it in 17. And I remember when we were doing the rehearsals, Freddie Hendrix kind of looked over to me. He was like, he's like, yeah, bro, you, you was in a good space. <laughs> <laughs> you were in a good room, man. <laughs> yeah, he was in your good room. Well, this is the room. This is where yeah, that's what you, so, And it's so, so funny how like, more, yeah. right, you were saying, man, this could just fit right perfectly for what we're going through. You know, we're, yeah. we're sitting in our rooms right? for a while, you know, musicians, we're yes, all like, yeah. just like, you know, what do we do? And, and, yeah. and that this is, I mean, so I hope you guys li like this, you know, this is an amazing tune. Um, and, and the album, I've been checking out the album, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. For, thank you, for man. all the stuff that, that you do, man. Um, man, I, I, I like to uh, ask you uh, about the, the education portion of your career. Cause it's, you know, it's interesting how we, we, you know, with the, with this sessions that we're doing, our, one of our efforts is to, to uh, also uh, really uh, portray the the full career of a musician, you know, sometimes for y younger musicians, we, you know, they might think that it's it's just all about playing. I just want to go mm -hmm. and hit hard, man, and that's how, yeah. you know, and that yes, but but then we see we that's what we love bringing people like you, that you go and hit hard, man, and you go and record. And you go and tour, and you go and teach, yeah. and you you know what yeah. I mean? Like you yeah. you you're yeah. chopping yeah. wood, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Uh, so could you talk about your the the side of your career as an educator, please? For absolutely, I think it's it's so important. Um, and not to be kind of cliche to give back. So again, as, as I mentioned, you know, I've been so blessed in that I've, I've learned not only in school, you know, as a graduate of School for the Arts, a graduate of Berklee College of Music, yeah. um, and, and touring the world with just a host of musicians, um, I've, I've gotten a lot of experience on and off the bandstand from a lot of these persons. So when I started teaching, I initially started teaching um, on the collegiate level, I've, I've held positions at, at, at Rutgers Mason Gross, mm. um, at Princeton, um, at the new school, um, at the, a school in the Netherlands that the great basses your tapey runs, mm. uh, Groningen Prince Klaus Conservatoire nice. and master classes at other places. So, um, in the early two thousands, when NJ pack was first built, Rufus Reed had started the program, the Jazz for Teens program. Mm. And so Don Rufus ran it for a couple of years and then Don Braden came Don on Braden. as the, the director for the Jazz for Teens program. And at that time, uh, Bruce Williams was the first saxophone uh, professor uh, there. And, you know, just as myself, Bruce, as you, you know him very well, was yeah. touring a lot at that time, particularly with Roy Hargrove. So he would go out with Roy with RH Factor or the, the Quintet, different configurations of things. And so he would ask if I had a free fall semester or spring semester. Right. So I kind of initially came into NJ Pack, um, the Jazz for Teens program, um, teaching uh, the saxophone students. And what I realized, even in that experience, particularly with the younger students, the college students as well, but particularly with the younger students, was that that's, an, that's a really important part of their development. Mm. Um, I'm even, even to breaking it down to the point of really illustrating to them the importance of how to practice and what to practice, just real basic fundamental things. Um, that over the years I've really been able to, to, to cultivate and, 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 and instruct them in ways that they can make it their own. So through that program, you know, having the opportunity, particularly being in New Jersey, where we are is such a, 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 a beautiful place yep. um, in terms of education um, because, you know, again, these students have the opportunity you know, in this tri-state area, they can go to a New York City or there there's a lot happening in New Jersey or they can get to a Connecticut or yeah. they can get to a Philadelphia. So they can get 
and, uh, and all these musicians are coming around. So again, with the exposure, we can expose them to all this music. Right. Um, and what I like, uh, particularly in, in most recent years, is realizing the, the strength in, in partnerships. You know, so not only NJ Pack with what's there in Newark, you know, that being the Institute of Jazz Studies, yeah. um, having all of that information with the executive director, Wayne Winborn, right. or yeah. the, the, the wealth of information that's a stone's throw BGO or um, the museums, but a jazz house kids that's just down the street, more or less. Right. So and we shared a lot of the same students and have a lot of the same core values and mission in terms of what we deem as important um, for the development of a young person to pursue this career in music. And as you mentioned, it doesn't necessarily have to be, I'm gonna be the next, and I, I use his name lovingly, but it was, that was the case. I'm not gonna be the next Christian McBride rock star. I'm not, and I'm not gonna be the next you know, young lion, the next Joshua Redman. Right, right. Those opportunities are great. However, there's still a lot of other territory that can be covered that can that can afford um, the possibility of really having a successful career. Like, again, to use myself in, as an example, you know, I've done everything from, you know, touring and doing Broadway and, 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 and movies and all of those things. But had it not been for a school for the art, had it not been for a jazz house kids, had it not been for a jazz for teens, right. a lot of these students would not have had the opportunity for that kind of exposure. So the best thing that we can do is to offer to them what we know and what we have. Mm -hmm. um, and the fortunate thing again is that because there's so many of us, That's right. yourself, myself, that that have that duality, the, the, the performance career, but also the educational track as to knowing how to impart some things to students in hopes that they will, you know, make it their own and start to develop on that is so important. So yeah, um, I, I think all of those things, all of those experiences has led me to to where I am now with um, particularly with with the NJ Pack Jazz for Teens, um, really trying to make build a curriculum that will you know, as best they can equip the students for the next phase, whether it be going to colleges, um, which a lot of them do, you know, they go on to schools we've, we've went to, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, choose a track somewhere else in the music genre, or at the very least, have a great appreciation for, That's true. for the music we play and become better people because better of those people. experiences. Yeah. You know, uh, broaden yeah. your horizons by, you know, broaden being, your horizon, man. really just yeah. being able to understand music. And even if you don't, you know, you don't end up doing that for a profession, man. Um, so you, you are the director of, uh, of jazz at NJ pack. Is that is, that's, right? The director of jazz instruction, inst yeah. jazz instruction. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the program? Uh, Cause you mentioned, and man, man, Rufus, that's crazy. So he did that <sighs> and he, Oh my God, he's one yeah. of the mentors we've talked about, right? He's still around, and he was a William Rufus Patterson is for twenty a jewel years. Jewel right? of a jewel, yeah, yeah. So again, Rufus Reed, great bassist. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to insult our hip audience; <laughs> they know who Rufus is. But for those who may not know, exactly, Rufus Reed is is an amazing uh, uh, jazz bassist. He's an amazing musician. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to limit him to just jazz bass. Oh yeah, I mean, he's a great composer. Um, a great educator. So he started the program Jazz for Teens at the inception of NJ Pack. And this is going to like 2000, mm -hmm. the year 2000. So he had this vision and this desire to want to create a program for inner city uh, students to learn the, the facets of what it takes to become a well-rounded musician. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, core, the core curriculum consists of all of those important things, theory, um, composition, uh, technique, listening, um, ensemble playing, um, and, and everything that falls in, in between all of those right. things, but right. real, real core specific, um, great curriculum. Mm -hmm. So jazz for teens, here we are now in the year 2021, as I mentioned, Don Brayton took over the, the directorship mm -hmm. and ran a fantastic program for about 16 or 17 wow. years. Uh, then James Burton came in for a year, 
Um, and then I've been the director there for the last six years. Nice. So what the program is, it, it really affords uh, students the opportunity to learn from the from today's masters. Um, you know, our instructors are, you know, Valeri Ponomarov, Earl McIntyre, mm. Alvester Garnett, uh, Wayne Escoffrey, um, wow. Alex Wentz. I, you know, I don't want to remiss <laughs> anyone by naming names, but a, a, a very good faculty. Mm. Again, I can say the same for Jazz House Kids. So right. these programs, I feel, are really giving students a leg up in in the next phase of what they'll encounter and most of them go on to you know these iconic jazz programs right. jazz schools and 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 they go in with a strong foundation yeah. because of these programs um so that's kind of jazz for teens in a nutshell it really affords um students the opportunity to learn um and further their growth um, but again, more importantly, not knowing that not all of them will be uh, musicians, practitioners. Yeah. Some may be educators. Some may go into some other aspect of music. They may be producers. Um, so producers. we afford all of these things. Um, in fact, one of the, the partnerships that we have with Jazz House Kids is um, film composition and film scoring. Oh, so some may go, go on to want to write, write music. Um, some may be teachers. Um, but you know, whatever the case may be, I, I think they're better off uh, for programs such as these. Oh know? yeah, man, I, I I think I think so as well. I mean, uh, we've been out here for about six years, and as, you know, moving from Texas, uh, we right away we just you know saw like a, a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? Like a proof of all the work that you guys and this through this uh, organizations that. Have have been built by musicians by real musicians of this yeah of this music uh yep. you know how the, they have impact the new generations i mean you got some of these kids like really playing the foundations you know and i was like you know it's, it's funny like, you said that. i remember once there was there was a saxophone we were doing a saxophone it was like the saxophone master class mm -hmm. and this is going back maybe 10 years or so ago. Oh, I'm forgetting his name now. He's one of the bad cats out here now. And anyway, this Is young Emmanuel? cat was playing his alto. Emmanuel, thank you. <laughs> he was playing so good. I was like, you know what? I should just go over there and break his reed right now. <laughs> That's, that's kind of like downright disrespectful the way he plans. So Why are you doing this in front of me, man? What's going on? <laughs> like, wait a minute. What? You got no home training. You know, what's your problem, young man? But again, it's just a result of, of having, you know, like you said, it, 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 I mean, your your program, the Jazz Exchange, is more than just a metaphor. It, it really is that. I think the tradition of, of this music that we celebrate a huge part of it is an oral tradition. And yep. wh whereas yep. it has to be handed down almost literally to the student, they have to, which is why I can't wait to get back into a safe live space because that's such an important part, you know, seeing how somebody breathes, seeing, you know, seeing, you know, for me, again, it was like watching a Gary Bart's, you know, the simple things, looking at his arms, watching, you know, hearing how he breathed. Yes. Watching the spit come down yes. the side of his mouth and understanding how that was adding something to the sound. <laughs> it was like, I was like, yeah. oh. That's right. Something. That's right. Like every, every little it. thing, right? Like I, I remember just, grew, you know, having that experience with my first teacher. Just I remember my because I have older brothers who are musicians too. They're like, man. You got, you know, they're always like hating on me, you know, because they're like, come on, man, you got to get better. You got to know, you, you got to be able to play the. And I was like, oh, shoot, man, I just picked the horn about some months ago. Give me a break, you know. But I remember right, in, right. In, in great teaching, you know, just like, just look, just check him out. See how he's standing. See how he grabs yeah. the saxophone. See how he, yeah. you know, yep. and, and it's yep. true, man. And it's true. It's, yep. You know, that's why I tell some of my. Some of my, my, my students, you you know, you, you got to check all those different things. Like we check out yeah. the music too. When you transcribe yeah, and you're man. checking out every single little note, yep. every inflection. Every single little note. I know we're yeah. getting right, you're deep into the, into yeah, this. To the weeds a little bit, yeah. But, <laughs> but again, it's, it's, it's a part of it. It's a part of it. And, and of you it. know, it depends on the, 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 
the level of where that student is. Yeah. You know, some students are at that place now. Right, like right. I have some students and I, you know, a lesson might be just, okay, we're just going to listen. Of course, one of my loves, and I'm sure you as well, is Cannonball. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I said, we're just going to listen to Cannon, but we're only going to listen for how he uses his vibrato. Where does it start right. in the center of the note, in the core of the note? How does it change according to the run? When he plays something fast, how is the vibrato different than when he plays a ballad? We're just we're not going to transcribe the line. We're just going to listen for how is he using his air to control the vibrato. Yep. Now, to some to a lay person, they might think, "What is he teaching my child? What what is going on?" <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought this was about saxophone. To, uh, or, you know, right? Like, you know, man. We, we're just going to listen to, to uh, Malcolm X, but we're only going to listen for when he takes a breath. They imagine, right, 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 right. What? It's re what are really. You, what are you it's really breaking it down right i mean it's uh, a yeah, it, it it's it, i mean it's so interesting how when, once you take you pay attention to those things the music it's like brings all the colors of it right it's like when you're like oh my god like the, from black you know black to white to like full color on you know hey yeah, man, man um so uh uh one of the all you know one of the main things also we want to talk about to you is how like you also have a, a a record label is that correct and that's correct man and and uh and before we dive into that can we listen to one more song that you have prepared for us this is yeah. uh brenda brenda may is that right yep so uh let's listen to it and then and and, and then and then i'll ask you more about it how about that you like that cool. all right let's do that so this is brenda may and then we'll talk about where where it's from what album is it and all that and what room was it composed in? <laughs> Check it out, guys. It's such a good to start a brand new. Sorry. <laughs> such a good tune. Oh, it, it, it's tune. always such a joy to start a, you know, I mean. <laughs> Thank you. 
Indeed. Wow, man, you you and uh, you and Freddie sound so beautiful, man, together. Oh. Wow, man, uh, it's like it's Jeez. it's hard to not play or want to play beautiful with Freddie. Oops. He's such a bad cat, and so you know, another you talk about again another one of those persons who is a a great musician, educator, and just a beautiful spirit. Freddie is one of those dudes, you know, just. Right, right. Bad cat. Bad, Bad cat. dude. Man, playing with him. Man, I, I, I love the tune. Uh, This is not your regular tune, like, you know, A-A-B-A, -A -A, you know. This is like mm -hmm. a, this is taking you in a right. This is taking mm -hmm. you for mm -hmm. a right, right? Like, it's a, it's mm -hmm. like, hey, hop on. I'm going to take you in. We're going to go and check out this stuff. <laughs> that's how, yeah, that's yeah. how I felt, man. It, it was, yeah, it was yeah. well, moving beautifully. Amazing. Yeah, thanks. Sometimes when I'm writing, um, it happens that way. It, it's it's melodies come to me and, I, you know, I don't try to box it into, you know, those traditional forms, A, A, B, A, or mm. it's got to be 12 bars. It's got to right. be, if it's an 11 bar melody, okay, then that's, that's what I got, that's <laughs> you right. know? Um, yeah. And that, that song kind of came to me in that way. Even, in fact, I heard the tag before I got into the melody. Oh, and I should mention also that arrangement 
that that we just heard mm-hmm. was um, arranged for me by uh, Anthony Branker, Doctor Anthony Branker. Anthony Branker. Great. Oh, yeah. Remember Tony Branker? Oh yeah, yeah. Great, great arranger, great trumpet player. I met him years ago when he was actively still playing trumpet with a band called the Spirit of Life Ensemble. But I always employ him in any way I can because I think he's just a fantastic arranger, orchestrator. He's he, so he arranged that, and there was also Danny Sedalnik, um on percussion. Oh, Daniel okay, Sedalnik okay. on that. So, um, but again, the melodies come to me, and again, fortunately for me, I just gave that what how many ever bars of the melody that is. <laughs> I gave it to Tony Branker. And he he created what we heard. Man, Tony was at uh he was at uh Princeton, right? He was uh, yeah, that's yep. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he started that program at right. Princeton. Yeah, he was yeah for twenty four five years. But we won't get into that. <laughs> but because I got I got some some feelings about that one. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, we're gonna leave that alone. That's right. So, hey, man. Uh, we want to shout out to everybody that's checking out this. Uh, you know the, your music. We want to thank you, man, for for you know picking wow. these tunes and really coming and sharing it with us. I mean, I I think we you know we believe that this music really creates change and is factual stuff that is you know good that's doing to the world. It's healing people. Absolutely. We just gotta let this music heal us. You know, just yeah, gotta yeah. let the music yeah. do its work. And yeah, and man. Y- your music yep. is definitely is hitting right into it you know just let me I, I you know so it. i appreciate that man can you tell us uh about the business side of the things i know you you put this out through uh through your label is that yep. correct mm-hmm. that's man, correct that's killing yep. man you MTQ did Records. you did everything yeah. you did the whole production you talked to the. i yeah. mean that's that's also like some like very interesting like uh area on like this whole process of like you writing the tunes calling the cats you know, like yeah. booking the studio, having the 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 label. Can you tell us about the the business side of your label? Yeah, um, I, I kind of went into it with a vision and learned some things in the, in the process. So the, again, for me, the vision was I, I felt, um, and I've been fortunate to record on other labels, but a few as a leader. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I have four four records out as a That's leader. Amazing. But probably on a, over a hundred as a side man. Nice. So I, I just felt like I wasn't getting opportunities enough to record and and say what Mark has to right. say and to be totally reliant on, on waiting for record. And, and I did, you know, what everyone does. I I put the the press kits together. I I approached the the blue notes, the verbs, the blah blah blahs, blah blah blahs. Right. And it just didn't go anywhere. Right. Um. I was fortunate to, on the record before this, work with John Lee, who actually mm. mixed, engineered, mixed and mastered that this Plus Strings record. But I did a record for his label. With John uh, Lee, you jazz... mean you mean John Lee, the bass player? Bassist. Oh, he yeah. Oh, he mixed this. Yeah. And produced. John it. is an oh, incredible wow. engineer. Uh, wow. Self included. Folks are sleeping on John Lee. John <laughs> Lee is really bro. He is like. A master I in the didn't studio, know engineer. That. Wow. He's got a he's got a studio at, at his house. So the record I did before this was called Black Side on John Lee's record label mm-hmm. called Jazz Legacy Productions. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my vision and and model, I looked at how John, who's a very smart business guy, put his label together, from from knowing how to to garner uh, financial support, knowing how to um, strategically um, roll out recordings how to how to just put the whole package together Mm -hmm. so i looked at him and and thought about all of the experiences that i've had over the years and thought to myself particularly now with the day and age that we're in where you know of course it, it comes with a certain kind of financial um stability that's needed to be there but right. i don't i don't look at that as the deterrent right the the plus sides are in that now it's 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 no more the model of necessarily needing a record label to put your music out that's amazing there are huge advantages to that though i'm not saying that you know if, if i got a call tomorrow from sony that i wouldn't be right. like okay let's let's have a meeting of course because that's that's a that's a big power engine. That's a big team of folk 
you know, that engine is like, you know, the bullet train in Japan. Right. Um, however, there are ways to do it in the interim. So for me, I was like, well, I, I know the musicians. I have a good relationship with the musicians. I have great track record in terms of public, in terms of clubs and radio stations. And I was thinking of all these necessities of once I do this, how then will it matriculate into not so much a financial gain for me, but a, a plus in the, the advancement and keeping the needle moving forward in my career. So I, I, I was working with uh, my brand manager, um, Walter, Walter Hall, Walter Hype Hall, mm -hmm. who helped me package it all together. Uh, we strategically approached all my endorsing companies. I got some financial support from some of them. Nice. Um, so that when we rolled it out, there was a simultaneous plug of this is a new CD. I approached all of the radio stations that I had great relationships with. Um, you know, of course, with BGO, WEAA down in Baltimore, some others in Philly and some on the West Coast. So that on the day of me announcing that this CD is going to be launched, they were kind enough to play, put my CD in rotation on the same day, mm. the same time, so that it 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 kind of got a little bit more uh, traction as opposed to just kind of doing a CD and then sitting in in you know here with a box of bunch of CDs and you know what do I do now? Right. So I thought about the, the front end. You know, with the music, what what kind of music did I want to play? What was the message I was trying to package? What was I trying to say? All the way to now that it's done, it's packaged. What what is the next step? So I was able to um, um, get it get it mastered, produced, and and get it into you know iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, all of those streaming services, um, and also make certain that my company. Not only just myself as the publisher, you know, with with BMI, who's my company, yeah. but once it started getting into the streaming services, that it was being uh, accounted for, so that revenue was being generated, so that you know That's quarterly right. I would get a check. I mean, it's a it's a minuscule little check, right. however, it's not just falling flat. You know what I mean? So it's it's more than saying, okay, I have a record company, I did a record. And it goes nowhere. Right. You know, the intention behind it is to empower myself to be able to do my music and also, you know, in the future, bring other artists onto the label. Man, man, it's brilliant. Like yeah. all the stuff that like the way that you just meant do you the way that you just explain it. It, I mean, it, people got to know like all the work behind all those yeah. little things oh. that you and that, just that could be a whole nother <laughs> sex segment. Oh, you know my very God. Well. oh my god man oh. man uh do you by any chance do you teach any like business music business classes you know what i i don't but I've, i'm 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 i freely offer what i know and 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 again the things that i don't know i'm always you know again i'm not afraid to call up pick up a phone you know call call some of my friends in the industry in fact i did that you know and asked them what were their successes man. you know um, you know, again, Gary Bartz was doing this years ago, but on the strength of having that track record, right. I think it's important. Right. There's something to be garnered in, in, uh, you know, I don't, I want to, I don't want to say, okay, everybody run out to Mars out jazz label because right. it's more than a notion. And there's a certain level of experience that can be, that's going to be needed to, to do such an that's endeavor, right. That's and, right. you know, so, but yeah. but reaching out and I mean, because look, uh, uh, you know, we also do this so that, you know, there's we know there's especially in this area, we know there's so many of us that are trying to do this music and we're trying to play. And so uh, what would you what would you say that uh, what would you say to that musician that's like, man, I want to do my album, you know, uh, I want to put it out, but I know, you know, it's tough out there. It's, you know, re really platforms. Uh, there's not as many platforms to really showcase this. Like, what what would you say that in terms of you know coming from like the business side of things and like what what would you recommend to yep. that next musician that feels like it's ready and you know what I mean and want wants to take sure. the world. Right. Well, I, I, a couple things I would say to that. One, I would I would say and hope that they would have that that 
that one confidant person who they can run things by and give them like honest advice because too often than not, you know, we're, we're, we're in a time now where everybody's killing or everybody's doing it, you know, and that's not the case. Sometimes we need to be told, no, you need to, you need to go back. So have that person that can help mm. keep them to, to give them the, 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 the path that's going to help them in the long run. Also, I would say that there's, um, for me, I was, again, talking about resources. There's a lot of free resources out there that do seminars and do symposiums on these sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, through my association with Berkeley, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a wealth. So the, there's, a, there's a wealth of online instruction of, of, of classes that are offered. Um, I, at, the, at the time I was doing this because I was using Logic, um, mm -hmm. recording my stuff, Apple was giving a lot of um, free symposiums on different facets of, of the music industry. This is, again, back when you could actually go down into the villa, you know, go to the Apple store and they would have a huge room and they would have a clinician come in and give an hour and a half talk on a, a whole bunch of different things. So I took advantage of a lot of those things. And then again, it was a lot of just picking up the phone call, calling a John Lee or, or calling a Kenny Garrett or calling some of my 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 uh, contemporaries and asking for their advice on yeah. what what should I be doing? That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed that, uh, um, you know, the community can be very uh, supportive, you know, musicians that yeah. have been doing this stuff that they know, yep. especially ones they know that you you're there, you're you know, you picking that stone, you trying, you keep yep. trying, you coming back and stuff. They really help. I mean, I've had so many friends that really helped me, especially now with this whole year pandemic of like learning yeah. technology and logic and yeah. home studio. Yeah. Man, you know, we I, I bet a bunch of us we were like, man, now I have to put my own. I have to know how to yep. record myself. I have to know yep. how to yep. have a microphone and yep. I hope so. Yeah. Anyway, it's it, I I really appreciate you sharing because these are things that that you you sharing with us that are. The long, the yeah. go long run, you know, like yeah. really reaching out to musicians, like knowing your business, knowing, you know, having somebody like the fact that what you were just saying right now, it's amazing, man. Like having somebody yeah. that can, you know, you can trust that they're going to be honest with you and that, yeah. that yeah. their advice is going to be honest yeah. and it's going to yeah. help you in the wrong run, in the long yeah. run. Yeah. That's, um, that's amazing. That's amazing advice, man. Um, you know, uh, we, we kind of, we, we want to listen to more music. Uh, before we do that, um, I like to talk to you. I like to ask you, uh, what are your feelings about the loss of uh, our friend uh, and uh, amazing musician uh, Chick Corea, man? Chick Corea, a giant of a giant, right? Jeez. Um, it's funny because persons like that, you you feel like they're gonna be a, they're gonna be with us forever. Yeah, and, and and I'll get to that in a moment because they they are. But the physical person, you know, you you would think, you know, in fact, I think there were some concerts slated for him at, at NJ Pack coming mm. up soon. So you think, you know, a person like that's going to be with, with us forever. And then you hear of their loss and your heart just just kind of just falls into the bottom of your shoe because the contributions that he's made <sighs> over the span of his career are just it's just enormous enormous yeah. beyond you know you talk about how music has the power to to heal and and those things chick Corea was that person whose music touched yeah everybody you know not just the jazz musicians not yeah. just the, the 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 piano players not just his music just covered the whole diaspora of music you know Classical musicians That's knew right. Chick Corea, you know, Yo-Yo Ma knew Chick Corea. The president, President Obama knows Chick Corea. You know, rappers know Chick Corea. So everybody mourned his loss because of the, the enormous amount of legacy that he has. Mm -hmm. And so to that, he will be with us forever. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching... Um, 
I think it was last night I was watching, it was a while ago, I was watching um, a, a funeral uh, celebration of Maurice White of Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm. And one of the band members talked about how Maurice, he said, he'll be here forever. He says, Maurice didn't die. He says, the only way Maurice is going to die is that, and I'm paraphrasing, literally the last person on earth would have to die for Maurice to die because he's <laughs> touched that many people. So you talk about a chicoria, he's touched that many people yeah. that his legacy will live. He's going to live on forever. That's right. Know? Yeah. Um, and and I've, I got to see him on, on, on different festivals and chat with him. And man, he was, again, you know, he was like that person you could walk up to and have a conversation with him. And he made you feel like you were, you were right there with him. It That's wasn't cool. about, okay, I won 23 Grammys. <laughs> I was nominated 65 times, the most in Grammy history, or I've, you know, I've recorded uh, about 80 Damn. albums as a leader, you know, Damn. when he getting into that, he's just like, you know, how are I'm you? just a human being. How are you? Wow. Hey, well, how are you doing? How's your wife? How's, how's the kid? Yeah. He was that dude. Then he get on stage, of course. And it was like, you better, you better, button, <laughs> you better tighten up your belt. Hold he on to your seats. Right. Oh my gosh. A beast. Man. So yeah. So to his family and his There's fans, so I, yes. We send our condolences That's continually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, thanks uh thanks for sharing that. I, I definitely, you know, he's a musician that I think we would he would live on, you know. He's part of our lives and uh and like like some of some so many musicians that we've lost it recently that you know yeah. it, that, that we I think the only, like you said, you know, the the only way that they would die is if the last person on earth dies because they've affected generations and generations, generations uh, of society. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, shout out to Chick and and all the people yeah. that uh, wherever they are, that they uh, that they uh, rest in, uh, in peace and that they know that we're going to yeah. continue loving their music, though. There so, um, hey, with that in mind, man, you have a new because uh, I, I know we we kind of get in there, you know. We I know you're a busy person. We I don't want to keep you all night here, but uh, you have a, a a new project coming out this year, that is called the Gospel According to Mark. Can you tell yeah. us about it? Well, we we're gonna. This is the teaser we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give the folks. So, obviously, again with with my background, um, youngest of seven, my father was a preacher, so mm. I was in church. All the time, all the time, to the point where I was like, I remember my oldest brother or my sister, I can't remember. It was like, when I get older, I ain't going to never go back to church. We went to church so much. Now you can't keep them out of the church. I, I put I put in all my time. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. Now. I'm done. You know, I check that off, you know. So this project is really is is, is who I am mm. at my core. You know the influences of what this project represents and i'll get into the parallel the dual parallel of the the gospel according to mark but this is this is this is jazz this is gospel this is uh a bit of a classical influence mm. there's there's going to be some rapping on it there's going nice. to be some spoken word there's going to be some poetry um all of my experiences um and so the story and you know of course it's not for you don't have to be a Christian to to buy and understand this record. Right. The parallel, though, is that you know Christ. Here's a man with all of good intentions. He he's he's being uh, he's being confronted with all kinds of obstacles, mm -hmm. but yet he always saw the good in people. He always saw the good in his in his situations and tried to make the best of that. You know, again, while I was sitting in my room, right? Right. So this this CD is going to speak of his journey, but through the lens of what's going on now in the world. Wow. You know, we got Black Lives Matter. We got this COVID-19. We got this social economic. We got, you know, the economy at like an all time, you know, it's almost like back to the 1920s, you know. I There's know, so many man. obstacles that we're being presented with. It's we're not as performers. We can't even travel. We can't even you know, we can't even work. 
Yeah, we but don't yet know. we got to find a silver lining in all of that. So this this mm. CD is kind of paralleling Christ's journey from birth, baptism, to crucifixion, resurrection, and all that happened in between that. And 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 celebrate the joy of of his journey. And so, you know, in, in my journey, you know, I mean, I wouldn't dare equate my my life to his. But, you know, we all have our own cross to bear. Right. And so with that, we have to make the best of it and try to do the best that we can. So that's right. That's what this is about. Man, that's beautiful, man. That's just really awesome. The 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 history of it of behind this this uh, new project that you have this is all new material correct you you writing all new material Man. yep again uh, i i've employed all of my good friends so it's going to be some <laughs> familiar names on the cd again the pen of Di- you know dr branker arranging oh, stuff for nice. me it's going to be with strings Ooh. again oh i was going to say that. Quint- strings yeah cool yep yeah beautiful i'm in this string world lately i don't know Man, yeah, the strings different. add this like this yeah. beautiful like yeah, bro. Mattress yep. of mute of like, yeah. oh wow, it's. Yep. I, yep. I I can't yep. wait. I I gotta dive into writing for st- strings, man, for sure. Yeah, that that's yeah. be something interesting. All right, can we? So we you have a snippet of it. We have a very short uh, uh part of yeah. it. Can can we show that to everybody? This is uh the yeah, actual yeah. track. The the. This is the. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the track, but it's still gonna be some other things added to what we'll oh, okay, hear. Yeah. So this is like a teaser. This is a teaser of the of the uh, the title track. Okay. This check, is the Gospel check. According to Mark title track. Check it out, guys. it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ye ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came, who baptized in the wilderness, and preached the baptism of repentance unto remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and all they of Jerusalem. And they were baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and did eat locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There cometh one after me that is mightier than I. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I baptized you in water, but he shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel according to Mark. <laughs> that's all you get man, for now come on man play the whole thing for us come on don't do that man this is wow yeah, man. man jeez it's yeah it, it's this project is gonna ooh. be ooh, it's gonna be deep bro jeez it's, it's really because again i'm gonna have a choir oh wow okay. it's gonna be oh man man i i i, I feel like faith yeah. is such an important part of our uh you know for the ones that we have that have faith and and to put it and really interwining with your music, it's to me yeah. is something that 
you know, that I, one day I would like to do that. I hope I don't have to wait too long to do it. But there's yeah. so many things I got to work on. But, man, to hear it, to see somebody like you put something together like that is beautiful, man. Really nice. Uh, yeah, well, we, we, I appreciate it. Yeah, we wish you much success with this. I mean, we can't wait to to buy the, the copies and, 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 and as well, you know, the music that we shared today. We encourage all our listeners to to go out to different platforms, contact Mark. Mark, can they get some physical copies? Yeah, absolutely. You can you can order copies, I think, through Amazon physical Amazon. copies, or you can go to my website and um, you can get copies there. Markrosemusic.com. Mark we yep. we put it. Um, we put in some of the links there. With that's actually one of the the oh great the yep. comments yep. is linked there. So make sure to yep. check it out and uh, get in touch with Mark. Do you, any LPs maybe? You, you know, know what? For this one, I'm going to do the gospel according to Mark. It will hey. be an LP release again. That that's the release won't be till the fall, the fall. like in November of this year. Yeah. But it's going to be a limited run of LPs for, okay. the, for the audio files. Absolutely. That's awesome, yeah. man. Hey, Mark. Yeah. And, and thank you again. We, I'm honored to, uh, to spend some time you, to, yeah. to talking to you. I know, you know. Uh, to 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 uh, you know use some of this time of your busy schedule it really means a lot to us and to our audience that really gets to dig in into Mark the educator the touring artist the you know the the record label director to you know so many so many really cool points <laughs> of your life yeah. that are really inspiration for a lot of us so we really appreciate the jazz exchange appreciates your time man I think uh. You know, we we uh, close to wrap it up. And uh, um, any last thoughts to our audience and general of music and life? Yeah. Well, first, I want to say to you and and your dear wife, Candace, I mm -hmm. thank you both for inviting me to be a part of your 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 wonderful segment here with the Jazz Exchange. And and what I'll say to the audience is that you know, spread the word. You know, it's 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 platforms such as this that I think are important. Um, because it brings so much information that, again, is about exposure that we would not maybe not get um, mm -hmm. or, or it's just another resource another that resource. I think is a very valuable, valuable platform. So I just encourage everybody to, to continue to spread the word, yeah. um, you know, let it let it grow like wildfire. Um, and, you know, when they log on, they'll get everything they need to know. <laughs> That's right. You all are doing such a fantastic job. Oh, thank, so again, thank you. Thank you, man. Just to wrap it up, we had that giveaway that we said from our local business. So we put in that information there on the screen right now. This is from Crafty Cloth. It's a black owned business. And he's given you guys a 10% off coupon. Uh, all you have to do is... Uh, you got to get that uh, uh, coupon code. You just have to put type in the Jazz Exchange when you go to washingcloth.com. He's, you know, again, this is the month that we're featuring artists. I mean, uh, artists and also black owned businesses uh, in supporting uh, and, and also just in general local businesses. So make sure to go on and find out more about this this wonderful company that's actually fu funded by uh by uh it was founded by a, a, a musician as well and and you know keep that creativity musicians you know out there you know you you like you mark was saying you know we get faced with a with a lot of obstacles you know let's face them and try to be creative with them so make sure to put in that coupon code you get 10 percent off try this products it, it should be really cool mark again thank you sir um, wonderful time spending with the, uh, that I spent with you asking some of these questions and uh, hope to stay uh, in touch with you. Please uh, to be it. safe out there and hopefully you and your family stay safe and everybody else watching this show. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and thank you everyone else for watching. Thank Take you. care.
Sachin Bhattu.